everybody, Richard Maxwell here. It is episode five of the Arcadia Music, Creative Musical Arts and Sciences Programs podcast. Thanks for joining us today on YouTube or wherever you may be watching. Um, and thanks so much for supporting these students in this program. Uh, I'm recording this intro on Tuesday. It's a busy week for us. We had Monday off for Labor Day, but Friday we are doing a stadium show. No joke. We're partnering with Tech Theater. We are partnering with the Marching Band, which is awesome. It's been literally 10 years um, since we've been able to do anything of this nature. Um, Mr. Fisher, uh, soon to be Dr. Fisher, actually. We need to get him here and do a segment. But anyway, um, great collaborator, wonderful musician, and a believable, unbelievable talent uh, in his own right and great educator and a good friend. Uh, but anyway, we've got all our kids joining together. Uh, we're also, uh, along with this podcast uh, and that performance, we're also going to do two live streams that day. Uh, we'll be releasing an EP. There's a lot going on this week. These students are amazing. And this episode features some great conversations, some new faces, some returning faces. We've got a music video that I think you're really going to enjoy as well at the end. And thank you so much again for tuning in and watching. And uh, here we go. Cool. Thank you guys for being here. Um, we have a whole bunch of stuff going on. You're like in every podcast segment this I week. I know. That's okay. It's not a bad thing. This is kind of funny, um, but not in a bad way. Um, how are things going? Great. Yeah. It's fun. Yeah. I've had like a bar to eat today, and I'm going to be here to like six thirty. So that's just amazing. Well, we'll see if we can't. Yeah. Um, we should probably see if there's a way to get you something else to eat. We'll yeah. figure something out. Um. <laughs> uh, John, actually, let's start with you. So. This will be stadium show for you this week. Will be stadium show number three. No, it's going to be number four because we did two last year. Oh my gosh, that's right. I forgot about the last minute. Hey, the old man is losing his memory. In. Well, <laughs> more than one thing can be true at the same time, but that's true. Shout out! Can we get another one of those? Yeah, uh, doing two was fun. <laughs> doing two was fun. Yeah. Well, it's weird though because I mean, but it's a lot of it is the logistics of it. So we got. One person who's kind of a veteran of these. We've got two folks who are new at it. We did an earlier segment where we were talking a little bit about expectations with it. But I'm wondering for you, you're now kind of like, like these don't phase you anymore, I think. Is that is that reasonable to say? Like, like, like you don't really like, um, you're not like worried about like doing this, right? Yeah, I'd say so because um, that even though I kind of did like a huge like instrument change from like freshman to uh, sophomore year. Sure. So like I was doing different things both years. I think freshman year was just kind of like, I got to see everybody working. That was like the first CMAS event that I did. Sure. And so I just got to see everybody, you know, working together just to get stuff done. It wasn't just, you know, guitarists moving their guitars and it wasn't just drummers packing up the drums. Although it was kind of like that, except everybody else just kind of chipped in and helped. Yeah, yeah. Well, and, and some of that, I mean, look, some of that's going to happen just because yeah. you got to go with the thing you know first. I'm wondering, though, like, so that was motivating for you. I yeah, guess because I words. was just a vocalist. You know? That's I true. I just showed up with a vocal mic, or the vocal <laughs> mic. I think I was like Jay or something. Right, 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 right. Vocal mic. Yeah. Jay for John. Yeah. <laughs> so, so... I guess I'm wondering, you two are going to be mm -hmm. part of this thing for the first time, the first of hopefully many. Is there anything going into it that you're like, hey, John, I'm wondering about, the, you know what I mean? Like, like, because we kind of were. Anything? I don't know. I we don't were know. talking about this earlier, <laughs> Lily. You and I were, we were kind of chatting. I can't remember if we, it was in the segment. I have like a memory of a goldfish. I don't know what you're. Fair <laughs> enough. No, but we were talking about this idea of like until you're in the space. Yeah. It's very hard oh. to really fully get your head around the possibilities of what this program can do because it seems so like it it mm -hmm. really does like, like it's it's overwhelming like the first week. Yeah. None of you are questioning the idea that we're literally going to do a stadium show where we're gonna roll a stage out and all this stuff's gonna be going on. Wait, we're like rolling a stage out? Oh yeah. yeah. I don't know what this entails. I just oh, signed up fine. for this. <laughs> no, that's fine. But 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 that's sort of my point. Like, but none of it seems so far fetched that you're like, well, that can't possibly be happening. Now that you're here, mm -hmm. so I'm wondering if there's anything that you're. Well, I mean, like, what are you? What are you curious about? Like, is there anything about the event 
Friday night that you're like, hey, John, what's this part of it going to be like or that part of it going to be like? Or, it's okay if not. I want it case. to be a surprise, honestly. Really? I just want it to be like, oh, this seems cool. I think it'd be more fun if I'd just be like, I show up and we just start <laughs> doing this thing. Yeah, well, we got to <laughs> practice. We got to rehearse. Well, yeah, we're rehearsing today. Yeah, we are. <laughs> we are actually very soon here. What about what about you? It's like you just want to show up and like see what happens. Yes, but like also like during it, how n- how nerve wracking is it during it than before? Um, that's a good question. Like beforehand, with all the setup and everything, like um, when I did it my freshman year, we ran through everything in the auditorium. And that was, like, all the buildup. It was super fun getting to rehearse everything. And then, like, last year when we did it up in the CMAS room, we just ran through it, it was like, a, a bunch of times. And, like, the, the setting it up in here was really fun. Um, but then, like, once you actually get out there, you hear this a lot with, like, people, like, rock stars or any musician that's doing this live. You know, once you get up there, it's really just a different feel to it than being in a rehearsal space. It seems like it goes by way faster than we think it. Like we time it. We sit there literally with a clock because we we we're. Stuck. I've talked to you guys all about this. This idea of you know the one issue with this show is not that it's so complex. It's that we're on a clock that we cannot control, and we don't want to violate either. Yeah. Like the last thing we want to do is have the referees go, "Yeah, you went over time at halftime, so we're now penalizing your team." Like we we wouldn't want to. I mean, but you never know. I don't know sports, so that meant nothing to me. Fair enough. <laughs> but you know that's bad. I know that's bad. I played soccer, so, so like. So and I don't sports ball either. I mean, let's not kid ourselves. <laughs> but I do think I do think most people come off the field, and they're like, "That was like that's why you want to do more of them because yeah. it's like no matter how much time we put in and how far we how how much how accurate the timing mm-hmm. is, it's always like it's like you start and then all of a sudden it's over. Yeah. It's a weird. Well, you've done a lot of acting stuff, too. I mean, I'm sure there's a sense yeah. of that in plays and other things like that. And I know we're just getting to know each other, but, I mean, you've done some other things in the past. Right? I mm-hmm. mean, I, I have a feeling that's kind of universal. If you're well yeah. prepared, mm-hmm. it just kind of goes. Oh, yeah. I think. I think if you're not prepared is where it gets a little bit, like, You're like, uh-oh. oh, I think this will actually be, like, a really chill and easy <laughs> thing to do. Like, I'm going into this expecting chaos. <laughs> it's oh, not yeah. there, honestly it's well, not you're in the program yeah, yeah but it's so not, it's not, you're already it's, witnessing but it. i think it's a good kind of chaos not to sound funny yeah mm-hmm. i think it's more a matter of you know there's a lot of hurrying up and waiting you know the mm-hmm. clock will be like running down for the end of the first half mm-hmm. and we'll be like, okay you know 30 seconds 30 seconds and we're gonna go and then it's like there's a timeout 28 seconds you know, are still yeah. left. And then there's another timeout. And then there's another, which is fine. I mean, the game is not. You can do that in football when there's like 28 seconds. Sorry, that's. Yeah. <laughs> no, they did, yeah. Well, and that's the thing is All we. Sports. And that, well, but that's my whole point is we don't know what we don't know with regard mm-hmm. to the timing of it. And that's why we are always are kind of like, okay, well, we've got, I don't know, XYZ minutes. We need to make sure that whatever we do, we fit in less than that. So mm-hmm. that if something goes last year, we had like a cable failure. There w- it w- oh, you know, no, you know what it was? It was a tuner was muting the signal. Yeah. And in the panic of it all, it was one button. But, but we it, didn't trace it to that one button. It it well, I think did it that was, delay it? I was kind of like far any? behind. Yeah, it, it did. delayed us by like a minute. It did, and it, it was, and it honestly nobody cared. Yeah. But for us, the hair. It was like an eternity. <laughs> well, no, but it like felt like an eternity. It felt yeah. like this minute, and I don't even think it was a minute. I bet you, honestly, it was probably 15 seconds. Probably. Because, like, we but, just extended the rumble part to that, right? Because yes. we got Did up there. Did everyone just, like, run around like, what's wrong? No, 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 no. That was actually, you know, that's a really good question. That's what me and Keegan were doing because we didn't know what was <laughs> going well, on. Well, you guys were stuck on the, on the platform yeah. behind everything. But actually, what was really cool was nobody freaked out. Yeah. Like, everybody kind of trusted that whatever it was would get resolved. And we would then move on with the show, which was actually, in hindsight, I'm actually really grateful for and impressed by nobody freaked out. And nobody dwelled on it after the show. It was just, okay, mm-hmm. we need to figure out what caused that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Let's analyze, you know, we'll debrief and prevent it. Okay, yeah. Because we figured out it was the tuner. No more tuners. No more tuners. Well, that can't be the solution, yeah. obviously. <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know. I think it's also interesting. I'm curious to see what you guys will be inspired to do after it. I think you got very energized after that yeah. first one. And then it was like, I mean, we like to 
be yeah. silly well, about like, it, but you like it everything now. Yeah, I like, signed up for a, every single show after that. Good. Uh, but like, here's a question: Like, did it depend? Like, what did you do your first show? Um, I was uh, vocals. Oh, vocals. Yeah. See, so, yeah, I'm producing. What are you doing? Vocals. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, like, did it like people you knew? Did it differ what they did? Ended up doing after that stadium show? I mean, not really, because the only people I really knew were um, were seniors, oh. and they were already like very good at what they were doing oh. and so like um like the three people i knew that were on guitar they stayed playing guitar for the rest of their senior year and that was oh um, which is yeah. which is yeah. fine i mean that's the whole actually deal. i saw jack and andrew play drums for the first time i don't know if they were doing that beforehand but i remember seeing them after like hearing them shred on guitar sure and being like absolutely mind blown well some of that also is is a function of just you start to hopefully get to a point where you feel comfortable with enough different things that it's like okay for this project i want to do da 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 and then you do that mm -hmm. and then the next one because you've got a different motivation or the circumstances or whatever change and then you're like okay for this one i'm not going to do that i'm going to do this other part mm -hmm. and that's when i think it actually gets really cool and interesting because then it's not so predictable but you also discover like whole other literal musical universes that you might not have otherwise even been mm -hmm. aware were an option for you but if you don't try it that's why we do all the shows we do people yeah. are constantly like, why would you do so many you don't have to and you're <laughs> not even paid enough to i mean literally this is i get this asked all the time and i'm you like just had to slip in the paid enough there didn't well you? <laughs> no no i don't mean it that way but in all seriousness i like doing it because it's interesting watching like john for example the change over time to see what works what's what appeals to him i find that fascinating i think it's fun like i don't like i don't dread mondays i don't dread staying here now and talking to you guys mm -hmm. i don't dread what we'll do tonight i certainly don't you dread don't dread Friday. my insulting old people jokes <laughs> i'm not old i don't Tuesday? know what you're t i don't know what you're talking about <laughs> See his old man memory. There we that's go. what it is. Oh, that's fair. That's fair. <laughs> that's fair. Okay, real quick. Here we go. We're gonna do this real fast. Just everybody needs to real quick. We're just gonna do one last. We're just we're just gonna do a hair check on the way out here as we go. Yay. Are we good? Are we this all good? Fan. This we fan. This fan has been the Are problem. I figured out what the problem was what and why that? my hair what, keeps what, getting. What? The fan keeps brushing this oh, one strand. Oh, we're gonna blame it on it, the fan. Yes. I see. Actually, we'll blame see. it on you because you placed the fan there. <laughs> I don't know if I placed the fan there. I might have. John, on the other hand, John's got the hat. John is able to avoid the whole problem. <laughs> yeah. And so I'm just going to say, I'm going to be the cautionary tale. The thing you want to, this is what you just don't want to evolve to. Yeah. I think we can all agree on that. Yeah, that's why, like, I wah, made a wah. curl pattern routine. Yeah. Just for okay. me. There you go. There you go. <laughs> hey, um, I, genuinely, I'm excited for this week. I'm excited for Friday's show. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. We've got a lot of work to do to get there, but I'm really glad you guys are part of it. I'm really. This will be good. Cool. <laughs> Sweet gentlemen, what's what do you want? What are we talking about today? <laughs> I wasn't prepared for this. <laughs> <laughs> okay, actually, I got so I got I got something for you. Um, in a previous segment, we were talking about lyrics, specifically song lyrics, and we were talking about how they impact our perspective on different things. Um, and my question to you is: Are there song lyrics that you have heard or of songs you like that have changed over time in other words you know you heard it a year ago and the lyrics meant i don't know one thing to you and then recently you heard it again and the exact same lyrics in the exact same song take on a different meaning has that ever happened to anybody has there ever been like a shift in viewpoint on a song lyrically or otherwise I suppose. I guess I'll go first. Yeah, go. Um, I think I talked about this in a previous a previous segment where it was a song by Radiohead. I think it was either Creep or Weirdo. I can't remember the name. But it had such a weird meaning when I first heard it. I felt like it was self-deprecating and all that. And it was a sad song. But listening to it like a year after, like after the whole fad ran out, but I still liked the song, it felt more of like a, um, almost like, a revenge kind of like i'm saying this but i don't mean it i'm mocking everybody else for them saying it to me oh. kind of weird lyric okay i guess change interesting 
I, I, I don't know if it, if it is the song Creep, I can totally see what you're talking about. <laughs> and if it's not the song Creep, it's okay. Um, did you have, like, and it, I'm just curious, did you have, like, any kind of, like, a, a life experience? You don't have to share anything you don't want to share. I'm not trying to make it comfortable. But genuinely, I'm just curious, like, was that just a, over time, I listened to it again, and I had a different perspective because I'm older, and, you know, you grow up a little bit, and you hear things differently, or... Did you have something occur that literally changed your perspective on maybe a whole bunch of things, and that happens to be one of them? I think what it could be is that I relate music a lot to emotion. So there's a lot of emotions behind a certain melody or a certain lyric. Okay. And maybe at the time when I first heard it, I was feeling completely different emotions and how I was just thinking mentally about how the song felt. Right. Then later in life, when I got older, as you say, matured, I was in a completely different place. And I was like thinking of it like, oh, well, maybe I'm taking back. or, And sure. I related my emotions a little bit into the song. By, and the lyrics That's changed. That's what I was kind of wondering. If yeah, the something... tone changed with my emotions and all that. Inter- it would be interesting to see, like, you know, granted you'll graduate, I realize, at the end of this year, but, like, a year from now, does it change again? <laughs> no, I mean, I mean, like, seriously, like, 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 it doesn't have to... I don't think things like that have to be a binary choice, A or B. It might be a series of evolutions over time. You know, I don't know. Maybe there's something to be said for the most powerful lyrical songs allow for that. I'll just have to keep listening yeah. to the song. Or I suppose on the other side, you could make the opposite argument. The most powerful lyrical songs don't do that, and they are universally accepted as <laughs> this is how we interpret it. I don't know which is better or worse. I'm not sure. Luke, what about you? Any Any experience with lyrics where it changes over time at all? I mean... We could open up to just songs in general, too, if you prefer. I've had a I've had a really hard time even listening to lyrics. Um, How come? I don't know. It's just, I guess it's more of a recent development for me. Like it, within the past four or five years, um, I've actually started listening to lyrics because, like, ninety percent of the time, I was distracted with something else. So I don't really have any experiences with music changing for me okay there's nothing wrong with that i was wondering because you you sing a lot i know i mean you were in the the vocal thing that we did here a couple years ago sometimes i wonder if when you do a thing i think for some people it opens up perspectives and then sometimes i wonder for some people, depending on what it is, I've had this happen to myself. The more I got into the thing, it kind of actually made the thing like it was better when I didn't know. I had this problem with movies. Like for all the things I like to do as hobbies, mm-hmm. I have a friend who's very much into movies and I love talking to him. But sometimes I'm like, I don't want to talk about that movie. What do I want to talk about? I, I just I don't mm-hmm. I don't want to I don't want to like I don't want to take away. There's like a there's a mystery behind the whole thing of it and if i get too deep into the rabbit hole something i never do on anything as you guys know that was a joke um no but it works both directions i'm wondering if maybe that's part of it for you that maybe maybe there's something about the more you dug into you doing it it sort of takes away the 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 magic maybe i don't know Hmm. maybe yeah and that's not a bad thing i'm just you know like this, you know, it's some, something to think about. I'm not, I'm not really sure. Mm-hmm. Atticus, what do you think? Uh, I think it, my case is pretty similar to Luke, where I haven't started listening to lyrics until maybe like three years ago. Sure. But the only time that I can actually say that the lyrics have changed for me is if I like have them explained or I read them out. Interesting. Wait, you read them out yourself and it seems more pertinent or somebody else reads them to you? Me read them out. Like on Spotify, you can see the lyrics. You're right. Stuff. Yeah. Okay, so wait. So this is interesting to me. So does that mean that... And what? I'm sorry. Let me ask this this way. So once you do that, though, you suddenly feel more connected to the lyrics? Sometimes? Yeah, sometimes. Okay. But if you don't do that, no matter what the song is... There's a sense of, 
and I don't mean this in a bad way, but there's a sense of almost like detachment. Is that, or or maybe not a, maybe not detachment, but you don't feel as connected until you do something like that. Um, it's not. I won't say it's that because I listen to songs all the time, even though like I can't understand the lyrics. Okay. Because I listen to music in different languages. And oh, yeah. Interesting. You do that. It... Okay. Sorry, don't want to get the rabbit hole, but I've had conversations with people. I used to really be into all things opera back when I did a lot of conducting. And one of the things that I started to realize was that because I don't speak French fluently or Italian fluently, especially Italian, musically the vocal lines were much more appealing. As soon as I would get a score that they would do it in English, it would kind of kill it for me. It was weird. It was like, yes, I understand now it's being sung more easily than looking at the translation, but the musical side of it, for some reason, because it was in a language that I could not easily... Are you, are you multilingual? Do you speak multiple languages? Um, I, I mean, got a D in Spanish. Fair so. enough, fair enough. No, the reason I'm asking is, is I'm wondering if there's something about that that it's like you know something's being said, but because you don't know the exact verbiage... You focus more on the actual sound. Yeah. I mean, I think that this is a problem with, like, um, translated movies is, like, they always use other actors to uh, replicate the voices so that they can have it in English. Um, mm -hmm. But the other actors, they don't actually know what situation they're in. They don't know how to actually <laughs> express it. So it's much harder to convey the motion, the actual emotion. I think the same thing happens with music. They don't, in, it isn't in the entirely the same piece, so you can't that's exactly convey the That's a really interesting point, Luke. Yeah, that's a very, it's funny, there was, I can't remember the show, but every now and then on Netflix, there'll be like a, like a Hungarian, you know, suspense drama or something, it's highly mm -hmm. rated, so you watch it. Mm-hmm. And in my head, I'm thinking about the way the dialogue's delivered, and it sometimes does feel a little like stilted, mm -hmm. or, or um, contrived almost. Interesting. So, it, so there's other art forms for it then. Mm. Is there? Okay, now I'm going to ask you something because I at least know the two of you, Atticus and Luke, are very much. You got some gaming background, which yes. I do not have. I don't know if you have that, Joe, or not, but I definitely don't. So we just established a sense of it's in music, it's in um, film. Mm -hmm. Is there an element of this? In like, is that a thing in video games? Like, are video games um, regional in that context, the same um, way like music or other art forms? I'd say they are. I don't know. Atticus plays most games in French. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I do. Do you really? Yes. Mm -hmm. Wait, you're not kidding? No, I'm not oh, kidding. Oh, I thought you were joking. Okay. Why? No, I'm not saying it's bad. I'm just like, like, what? Why? Why are those the appeal? There must be something. I think like four years ago, I accidentally changed the like spoken language to French, and I thought it was funny, so I didn't change it. And so I you just left it there. <laughs> yeah. Does it change the like? Okay, so you're playing X Y Z game, and mm -hmm. you're playing X Y Z game. Yeah. You're doing it in English. <laughs> you're doing it in French. Does that? I'm fascinated by this. Does that change the gaming experience? Like when you guys are talking about the same game, assuming this has happened to you, do you have like a different experience or sense of it because the language is different? Well, I have to read captions. So, oh, yeah, so in a way. Oh, you're cheating. Mm -hmm. I'm, no. sorry, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding, I'm kidding. It, it makes it harder. I bet it does. Mm -hmm. I bet it does. Um, when they were little, Grayson and Tanner used to do that frequently where they would watch shows. And they would deliberately switch the language. Hmm. And they were picking up phrases and things. Um, which I thought was kind of fascinating. Um, so I'm gathering the, the end result of that is it basically slows you down. Okay. Which is okay. Again, no judgment. I'm just I'm fascinated by this. Interesting. Are there other art forms where this might... Again, I'm just, you know... I know that, like, oh, you can... No, no, go, go, okay. go. I know, like, since I watch anime sometimes, like, people wa usually watch it in dub, which is the Japanese version, and they usually make fun of the 
no, I messed it up. Sub subtitles with subtitles on. Right. right. And then they usually make fun of English dub because it's not very good. <laughs> well, it's hard. I mean, yeah, the the functions of it. There's a, and there's a um. My recollection, the little bits of that that I've seen, are um, that there's like a uh, there's a rhythm, there's a there's a there's a pacing to it that's become kind of cliche, but almost, and I know it's anime, but cartoonish, not in an anime sense of the word, in a mocking almost sense. Like it's 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 like you know going in, it's going to be delivered in a way that is like superficially over the top almost. Does that? Um, yeah. I mean, again, just more curiosity than anything else. It's interesting stuff, though. Be interesting. You know, it'd be fun to explore this more, though, because I, I love, I love how you guys think about this stuff. But the idea of is there something? You know, it's not clearly. It's not just musical. Mm-hmm. I think we stumbled across across an interesting topic for future segments. This idea of. Where is that changeover? What does happen when you reinterpret? And like to your point, it suddenly become it's not the same thing. It might be better, it might be worse, but it's not the same thing anymore. Mm-hmm. It's fascinating. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I've sort of thought of just an idea, um, but I feel like, well, my understanding of language fluency is that um, there's way there's certain ways that you can define it by knowing all of the grammar and words and how to put together sentences if you can think in that language. But I think that for me, I think that uh, when I know a language, it will just reading the text and thinking of it within that language. If it causes emotion, then I will know I'm fluent in that language. That's an interesting way to measure that. That's very interesting. I had a former, um, just for what it's worth, we'll end on this, I suppose, but I had a a band parent back in the day at Arcadia when I was running the bands and orchestras here, and uh, she was awesome, always helpful. Um, Gloria McKenzie, they were great. They were here my first year at Arcadia, so like 150 years ago. Um, No, but... Gloria was from Mexico. Her husband was from, I think, somewhere in the Midwest. I can't remember where my husband was from. But she once told me that, to your point, she would hear you say something in English, but she was aware that what was happening was she would hear it in, Eng- in English. Her brain would quickly translate it to Spanish. She would come up with the response in Spanish, and her brain would then flip it back to English to say it back out. And she would do this very quickly. But there was clearly this conversion from one language to the other that was going on inside her head every time she spoke to somebody like me who was not bilingual. And it wasn't like a, ins- like, it wasn't like a, a combative thing. She wasn't like, like mocking me or saying, you know, it wasn't a, you know, for, well, Gloria was clearly way smarter than me. I mean, that's a whole <laughs> separate conversation. Um, but I, I actually so was admiring her husband too. Wonderful, great people. But no, but my point was just the, uh, like, that process of having to flip it and then keep Mm. it emotive and keep it to have meaning beyond just words. Mm. There's something to that. I wonder. Thanks for coming in this week, guys. We got something for next week too. I think now to think about (laughs) this is cool. Thank you. Sweet. Cool. Perfect. All right. So, um, ladies, thank you. (laughs) Thank you for being here. Um, so, so this week, um, and I know you have a topic that mm-hmm. you want to get to, but I did want to just point out we're doing this on, this is Tuesday afternoon, mm-hmm. um, and we are, this is a crazy week. Mm-hmm. So we were off Monday. Friday, we're doing a stadium show, an actual, we need to put footage of that up on the next oh, yeah. Yeah. podcast. People mm-hmm. never, for years, Mr. Fairchild, the theater teacher, and I, were, we would walk around, we still have clips on our phones, because would, we would say to people, yeah, our high school students do a stadium show, and people are like, no, you don't. Like, no, we actually really do. And they be like, Haters. you can't. Well, no, it's not that. It's, it's, no, it's what we were talking about before we started recording. It, if you think about it, if you've been in here, it totally makes sense. But if you have never actually been in the room, it sounds absolutely nuts. Oh, yeah, it sounds yeah. insane. But if you've been here for a while, you're like, well, of course we go do that. Why would we not do that? We've, We've been here mm-hmm. for like four weeks. Come on. 
Yeah, but you oh, well. already. But it's it, uh, it actually four weeks is like an eternity. I know. Anyway, like this is my home. Uh, that being yeah. said, so what are we yeah. talking about today? Okay, ladies? um, first off, I would like to say it feels so great not having to rush this because I do these during lunch most of the time. You do. I do because I can't. Come I was in actually kind of sad we didn't do a lunch one today. I know. I love my lunch. Like, I literally that's an excuse that I don't have to sit outside. Actually, okay. <laughs> yeah. If you're my friends watching this, please don't quote me. I, I love you. I would guys. quote you. <laughs> um, uh, second of all, second, secondly. Okay, so our topic is, I want to call it lyric analysis, and great, the camera's on me. <laughs> I want to call it lyric analysis, and the fact that um, we all like songs. This is an entire program based on music, so... Is it? Sorry, okay. What? Wait, too soon? <laughs> Do you want to reference soon? the... I'm really, <laughs> I know, I'm really, I'm sorry, um, I'm sorry. And, and so then we picked out, I told everybody to just pick a couple verses or a couple lyrics from a song that you really enjoy and may ha- may or may not have a deeper meaning and explain why those lyrics like reach out to you and why you really like oh, those. Oh, I like that. That's yeah. cool. Okay. Do you want to go first? Since you, oh, no. I picked it out and I had screenshots and then I deleted those screenshots. So I'm, I'm going to bring those up. Diamond, you're the only one who has prepared. Uh, okay. Um, okay. Wait, why did you? Okay. Well, we'll get to why I got deleted. <laughs> that's, that's a separate. Okay. Okay. Um. So mine is like um, kind of underground. Actually, I don't even know. But I like underground by- <laughs> music. It's That's fun. Okay. <laughs> Mine is by Peter Cat Recording Co. Okay. Okay. Uh, I chose the song "I'm This," and the lyric, um, and who I am is not measured by what I've become, but I know enough. I will make the same mistakes because I. I don't know what it is. I don't care what it is. I'm this. Uh, the whole reason I chose this was, like, like recently I've gone through, like, mistakes. And, you know, like, everyone goes through mistakes, but people make a reputation because mm-hmm. of your mistakes. Mm-hmm. And it's, like, it's just so unnecessary for people to do that. So I just, like, I don't know. I thought, like, this this lyric part was like so meaningful to me because like it's so true like i honestly have this attitude now where it's like i don't care about what people think now yeah that's a good thing yeah good it's, for you. it's mostly now like it's all about me 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 like taking care of myself now good and it's like Is, yeah i'm sorry I mean, i'm curious so i'm just i'm just wondering when you're hearing that song uh-huh. do you do you hear it as a reinforcement for that, or do you hear it as a if you feel yourself slipping back to that other mentality? You're like, I play that song and it pulls me back I, to yeah. where I want to be. I, yeah, like motivation. But I also play this like as like a jam. Like if you don't really listen to the like lyrics, you just hear the background and it's like so nice because of the music. Mm-hmm. Because it's such a nice vibe. Like it's so like it's so different. Do you, I don't know if I could play it. So we're, <laughs> we are going to work on a way to play okay. stuff in. Okay. I also yeah. don't know what happens when we get tagged on YouTube for, for playing stuff yet. As a okay. person who has been copyrighted because she used to have a YouTube <laughs> oh, no, channel. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it happens is all the, the most annoying the, yes. possible thing the you will ever go through. The gets tagged no, yeah, yeah, yeah. constantly. But okay. that's okay. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That's um, fine. Yeah. It's, I was just going to comment one other thing that's interesting to me personally. You mentioned, because this is all about lyrics. It's so odd to me. There are some songs... That it's absolutely the lyric. You can mm-hmm. do anything with the music. Yeah. The lyric always beats yeah. all the music. And then there's other songs where it's almost like nobody even has a clue what's being sung or cares. Yeah. yeah. You know, and and it's and the music just gets to you. Yeah, it's I, you like I've always I've music. always been fascinated <laughs> by what because clearly there's a line between those two extremes, mm-hmm. and I've always kind of wondered. Like it, it, it's been something I think would be worth researching a bit, especially through the perspective of of folks like yourselves who are so creative, but younger creative people. Like, thank you. How do you? Well, no, but but seriously, like, like I mean, I make jokes all the time about being a hundred years older than all of you. And, oh my gosh! And factual, but, but, true. But beyond, but beyond the joke of it, one of the things that I think is fascinating. I talked to my son Grayson about this and Tanner endlessly because it's interesting. I'm over schooled i i jump into analysis mode without even realizing it there was a long period of time where i could not listen to music to enjoy it i had to like un that's so teach. sad it was yeah. awful because i had studied so much stuff that mm-hmm. my brain would immediately break it all down to this chord progression mm-hmm. and that thing and that comes through that. and i'm like 
can't you just enjoy the song? <laughs> yeah. My point is, mm-hmm. that's why I like talking with you guys, because you haven't gone down that, I would argue, creatively destructive, potentially, rabbit hole. You're still doing things on a more mm-hmm. pure level, yeah. which don't lose. Mm-hmm. So I love that. I love that. Anyway, sorry. Okay. Keep going. So. Yeah. I found my song. Actually, it wasn't. I don't think it was the original one that I chose. I did that but entire monologue there. It was wonderful, and no one saw me. Oh. This is why you guys need to be producing <laughs> this. I know, I know. All right, okay. sorry. So keep going. <clears throat> this song's by Kathleen, Catherine Lynn Rose. It's called "Price of Perfection." Um, you guys know what academic validation is? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, <laughs> that's what this song is about. Um. Little Let's pr- pretend I do, but I'm quizzing you to make sure you know what it is. <laughs> Academic validation. It's like yeah. you know when you find validation in other uh, people. Yeah, it, but, but instead about, you yeah. project it into your grades. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and it, that's a thing. Yeah, it's. <laughs> Sorry, I was um, such a bad d- student. This I like the worst example. <laughs> Me too. For anything Actually, academic. I did not say that. Oh, no, and you teach in a school. I sh- <laughs> Don't don't give it away. No, no, seriously. Okay, so okay, so so the idea is you 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 project yourself. So it's there's this thing called a burnout gifted kid, and it is a person who excels at something at an extremely young age, and then when they no longer excel at it, or they actually have to try to do something, they have like a breakdown because they were so used to it being so easy. So price of perfection is a little bit. I know adults who have that. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. Okay. I would like to think I'm not a burnout gifted kid. I mean, I think I did excel like academically at a very young age compared to others. But I think that me like, I don't know. OK, back to the song. Anyway, go back to the yeah, song. Yeah, back okay, to the okay, song. OK, I get what it is. Okay. OK, cool, cool, cool. Tell me what's the price of perfection. Tell me why I crave your attex- a- affection. When excellence is expected, praise is a luxury. Why do my achievements define me? Why does life feel so damn confining? When success is respected, there's no room for mediocrity. And that's basically not, this song is mostly about her parents' pressure on her, but it's also about her own pressure that becomes her, like her parents' pressure becomes her own. Because like one, when excellence is expected, praise is a luxury. That's honestly like kind of real. Because that's like real because when you're expected to meet this thing, that is above and beyond compared to everybody else, but you are so used to going beyond. That is your new regular, you have to meet this at all times. So then when you're like, oh, I ended up did trying like really hard and I did a better than everyone else. Well, great. You do that all the time. Too bad. You don't, you're not oh, going to get praise for that. Right. You're yeah. not. Yeah. And on okay. it. And I've been through that before and it sucks. My hair is ginormous. <laughs> Sorry. I'm, <laughs> but it's like, that's a, th- that's a real thing. That's <laughs> <laughs> the frizz. The frizz. Oh, the frizz. Sorry. The frizz. Sorry. <laughs> sorry. But, yeah. And then tell me why I crave your affection. That's also another thing. It's like, whose affection am I craving? My own? At that point? Mm. Like, yeah. I just need to beat is myself every time. That's what it felt like when I first heard the is, song. Is there an element of this the lyric that is kind of also like a hindsight's 2020 vibe like well okay I'll, gi- I'll give you an exa- i'll give you an example so i i grew up mm-hmm. with very similar feelings d- yeah. different context but mm-hmm. similar feelings and i can remember i was not very close with my dad until the later part of his mm-hmm. life in the last 15 years of his life he and i spoke literally every day he lived in ohio i lived out here in arizona he would call me or I would call him. We spoke literally almost every day, like clockwork. It was mm-hmm. awesome. But I can remember as we got more comfortable, I asked him about that sense of, because you talk about parents and pressure. Mm-hmm. Now, accounting for the possibility that he would also evolve and mature and da 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 But my question is, one of the things he eventually told me, he's like, he, w- he was really sweet about it. He's like, I'm really sorry you felt that way about these things. He's like, honestly? Uh, that that was a, he phrased it differently, but he basically was like that. That was a you thing. You that we didn't do. That's what you just oh. described. We didn't actually yeah. do, but you perceived it that way. I feel bad you perceived it that way, but that thing wasn't actually there. Oh yeah, I mean, I think which I'm not discounting what yeah. you're what you're saying. I think I'm just curious. Personally, for me, it, part of that was there, but I also think 
myself when I was younger, I exaggerated that so much. I'm glad I caught on to the fact that I was perceiving it that way at a younger age because otherwise I would have fallen off now. A burnout gifted kid is stereotypically you fall off freshman or sophomore year. And okay. so, th- well, good. So being aware of things. Yeah. Early, good for you. Yeah. That never ends well. No, it doesn't. Interesting. Huh. <laughs> okay. Kalena, Kalena I knew you were a last minute addition yeah, because, okay. yeah. Do you Hold have on. like any real songs? Hold on. Like, Her check. <laughs> really? Really? Okay, this fine. This is what I'd like to have all of her on the no, 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 podcast. No, no, no. Let's just be fair. Let's be fair. So are we good now, ladies? Are yes, we okay? Yeah. I'm going to take out my hair, okay. actually. Are we, are we all right? Okay. Yeah, this is fine. not getting better. This is actually getting worse, so we're just going to go back over here. Okay. <laughs> okay. So um, I didn't really have a song in mind because I feel like I'm really difficult. <laughs> I have not difficult. Not. I have difficult emotions, and I have difficult feelings, and I have difficult processes of processing things and it's just but like i'm kind of like a mixture of what mm-hmm. you guys said like with the over burnt academic kid or whatever yeah and, <laughs> and yeah. Um, or the burnt out academic kid and Sorry. then um and we'll then what going. you said about mm-hmm. like the yeah i'm just i'm not able to like i don't think people understand me the way that i do and that frustrates me because no one no one knows themselves better than yeah. themselves. I oh, said yeah. that wrong, um, but you actually <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. Um, I don't even know myself. You know, we don't even know what you're capable. Yeah, but, but like, it's okay. Sorry. No, 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 no. no. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> Elena, I think you need to hear this. You are not difficult. You're amazing. No, yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Even well, though I was I've gonna say, do you, is it- I had a mental breakdown earlier in class and she witnessed today? i would she threw up can today. i say can i see what yeah, happened like, can i say what happened can i say what <laughs> i'm not gonna today. tell why it happened yeah, she why. threw a muffin at the wall <laughs> <laughs> she, she was uh, so upset she was so I upset it with water yeah she was so upset her muffin was dry that she soaked it in water and then just threw Ew. it at the wall <laughs> <laughs> that's actually okay. good wow actually oh, i made okay. a hole in the bathroom okay. <laughs> let's let's don't okay. don't do that because anyway. now we're gonna get in trouble anyway. for vandalism. But. Oh wait, well, yeah, I did not do that. <laughs> okay, for legal this purposes, a different bathroom, all of this was a not joke. This was a skit. Yeah. This so, was yeah. So, anyway, so, anyway okay. I feel like like what I was saying. Like I've been trying to write like a song that describes me as mm-hmm. I am, and I'm not mm-hmm. gonna like tell my whole life story and stuff. It's just mm-hmm. I need something mm-hmm. that like lets me release the emotions. But lately, I haven't been finding anything to fit that. And it's been making me frustrated because I'm a perfectionist. And if mm-hmm. I don't get okay. things perfect, okay, I'm, I'm like... Okay, I'm going to give you a suggestion. You don't have to take this. Okay. But it, this will, we're going to talk about this in class, actually, pretty soon anyway. So, and I, I could be wrong, but what you're describing sounds a bit like you're trying to do what I would call write and produce slash edit at the same time. My suggestion to you is... Just write. Mm-hmm. Don't worry about the structure of it. Don't worry if it makes any sense. Don't worry if you like the rhyme scheme. Don't worry if you like the word. Like, make the thing exist. Okay. Get all of the, I hate to use the word pain, but get all of the feelings out. Just get them out on paper or, or a voice memo or whatever, but get them out. Then when you, and I, I believe that there's a point you'll cross where you'll be like, okay, I've sort of exercised the initial demon of it from my system on some level, yeah. then go in and start looking at like, okay, this line works, this one doesn't, rework this one, change that word, whatever. What a lot of times, the problem for most songwriters early on, at least in my experience, is not the intention of the piece. Because you clearly have a strong intention, you've thought it through, you know what it should be. Yeah. The problem and- is, carrying it through and you hear this stuff in your head and you get wrapped up in the yeah but that's not right that's not right that's not right the problem is is then you stop yourself from the (laughs) cathartic part the release part and then it never goes anywhere anyway so i would say just write the stuff don't worry about it this is why i mean this is no surprise to anybody i talk about this all the time I will tell you when we record it here, when we release mm-hmm. it here, when you do it in a live stream, yes, we have to look at lyrics carefully. It's a public school. There are yeah. rules we're going to have to follow. But I will also tell you, and I have no p- issue with this, when you're writing, just write. 
we can sit down and look at the lyrics and make a quote radio edit, a family friendly oh, yeah. version. <laughs> but you should never, in my view, ever stop yourself creatively when you're literally in that creative space. When you're just yeah. like spewing. Yeah, I feel like, I feel like that's probably like people, where your frustration's coming yeah. from. Mm -hmm. But like people will thrive for me to be perfect. I'm sorry, mommy, but like <laughs> 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 me. <laughs> that's okay. That's okay. Yeah, but like like if you're watching this, I'm sorry. No, you should no, really no, listen yeah. to Price of Perfection. I, look, I don't really yeah. know that well. We've only so, like, met parents for this year, but honestly, my suspicion is his honesty is always going to be okay. Yeah, yeah, but like, mm -mm. I don't know. I just feel like I have this channel, and it's like not, it's like not letting out, and I'm, I'm getting frustrated because of that because I feel like I can't mm -hmm. talk about stuff, and I just sure. went through a hard time in my life, and I'm trying yeah. to like process all that, and I'm not good at processing. And no stuff. one is. And I'm taking. I am a hundred years taking, older than all of you, and I'm telling you, no one is. And I'm taking it out. So you're in history <laughs> books. There we go. Honestly. Well, no, but look, and that, well, look, that's fair, and that's normal, and that's what people do. And I'm not a psychiatrist mm -hmm. or psychologist or therapist or anything. All I'm saying is, from the creative side, that's the one thing in life I feel pretty good about. Just make the stuff. The the thing that's blocking you, mm -hmm. I'm at least try this. I'm almost willing to bet it's not the stuff you're doing. It's because you're trying to evaluate it while you're creating and it sets you on this like alternate path with it. Yeah. Whereas if you just write the stuff and get it out of your system mm -hmm. and then you know, my you theory can workshop it later. Right. My theory is you can't write or create when you're angry or upset mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you can use that experience and channel it into something creative oh, yeah. but while you're angry and upset it's not gonna yeah it doesn't work it, yeah. so, we and have, i remember like telling myself for the longest time like i just want to be a normal kid but like then later How's on, I going? realized just like sorry, <laughs> that sounds weird. I didn't mean for it. Normal. Sorry, if you're in CMAS, are you really a normal kid? Yeah, 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 if you're in CMAS, are you really a normal kid? Yeah, that's fair. But I, but like recently, I've been like, you know, whatever. Just yeah. it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've tried and it hasn't worked too many times. And at this point, I'm gotta put that. I don't care attitude. I think it absolutely does matter. I think the issue is what do you do with it? Yeah. This mm -hmm. is what I mean. People struggle with this all the time. This is not a high school thing. This is not a teenager thing. It's why, not to sound silly, but it's one of the reasons that I'm most proud of what we do here because at least there's that, you know, 53 minutes a day that you can channel it into something here. Oh, yeah. Me and Sophie writing the song right now. Okay. I'd like to say this Sophie. I love you. You're amazing. <laughs> you are literally writing the music when I can't, because I just wrote the entire lyrics. I sent it to her, and I was like, "Hey, can you yeah. can you like do something with this?" <laughs> that's cool though. But that's can what you like? Happen. Can you just like go with it? Right. And then she was like, "Okay, so you're gonna sing it." Uh, sorry, I'm getting off track. No, but no, no. She was like, good. "Um, so you're like you're gonna sing it?" And I was like, "Yeah, for sure." And then it's what's really funny is that I can't keep the tempo, so she'll have to tap my leg when we sing. <laughs> she'll okay. be like, "Lily, you're too fast." But okay, in reality, um. I like the what fact was, you're collaborating. Yeah, what was I saying? We what were, was the topic? The topic had to do with no, lyrics. Yeah. <laughs> the topic had to do with like, oh yeah. But you guys the all picked lyrics the subject, that were... Okay, the subject of my song, it's called Popcorn Ceiling. This is another Do you one. think Sophie would yell at me if I leaked this entire thing? Is this, is, oh, this <laughs> well, is the one you wrote? <laughs> you yeah, know what? Maybe. Let's do this. Let's save this mm -hmm. for next week because okay. maybe we can get a scratch recording okay. of it to reference. And also it's yeah. kind of something to look forward to. Yeah. This is, I... I'm so grateful to you guys. I am so enjoying these conversations, mm -hmm. <laughs> and I'm finding out all this just interesting, creative stuff from all of you, mm -hmm. um, and what you can do. It's really mm -hmm. cool. Yeah, Mr. Maxwell, I want to say something. Oh, uh, we're gonna edit this out. I'm just kidding. <laughs> yeah, <who knows? laughs> okay. One word. One Going word. To the you delete button now. Ah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you guys. Though I this was cool. Yeah. Perfect. Okay, so first of all, thank you guys for doing this. This is um, kind of a quick uh, preliminary segment that we're doing uh, later this week. Uh, we're doing this is Tuesday, and Friday we have this big stadium show. Um, hold on a second, that's a bad camera angle. Yeah, it was just staring at me with yeah, this very sorry about smart. That. Let's expression. do this again. Anyway, thank you, guys. <laughs> thank you guys for being here. We're doing kind of a before the stadium show for the first time episode is what this kind of is about. Um, so you guys are all in CMS one and you're really doing awesome. 
Um, and I mean that sincerely, not just because you were kind enough when I said, hey, I need a couple of volunteers and didn't tell you what it's for. And then you guys all came in here to do a podcast segment with me. I mean, you're legitimately doing some cool stuff. You guys are all signed up to be part of the show on Friday, the stadium show. Um, I guess my question to you to start with is very simply, what do you think is going to happen? at the, like, like, in your mind, you must have an image or a thought of this thing you volunteer because nobody's required you're volunteering which is awesome that you're doing that i'm wondering like what are you thinking is this going to be like on friday like what are you anticipating no right or wrong answer i'm just curious um i think it's gonna be like just like everyone's just playing music like just a whole big group of people just all playing like, yep that's just what i imagine my head Hopefully that's what will happen. <laughs> um, what other things? Is there anything about like the the organization of it, or anything in terms of like I, the event itself? Maybe I thought that everything would just be in like a big every every person like the guitar players would just be in like a big lineup, and then the drummers like up towards the front or the back or however they're oriented in a band. I don't. I've never been to many concerts. Oh, so. okay. I've only been to a couple, both of them Imagine Dragons. But That's all right. I've only they're been, great. Yeah, they are. They're great. They're amazing shows, but yeah. although hard to base like whatever a standard show would be based on on their instrumentation and everything else, probably based on being only to two concerts, I cannot tell. No, that's okay though. But but your instincts are are, are pretty good. Um, Karen, what do you what's uh, what's what's your thoughts on what you think is going to happen Friday? Honestly, my mind's kind of like racing, like thinking about it. Like, I'm trying to think of how we're going to get everything kind of like down there on the field. And like, it's going to be crowded and there's going to be so many people. It's going to be hot. We just shout, okay. get out of the way. Yeah, exactly. Get out of the way or get run over. No, I'm kidding. We don't <laughs> yeah, do but. Don't do get out of the way or we steamroll <laughs> yeah. with this giant yeah. stage. <laughs> Sometimes that does happen. No, but you're you're not you're not off. You're not wrong. I mean, there it is crowded, and there's a yeah. whole lot of stuff. Um, okay, let me let me ask you this. And I'm not looking for like I'm not fishing for anything here. I'm genuinely curious. We don't require it. You have been in this program for four weeks, and I'm so glad you guys. Are. I mean, I cannot. I really mean it. Don't get me wrong. I love all the advanced students. My oldest son is one of the advanced students. I literally love the advanced students. But you guys, without you, it doesn't matter. Like, nothing happens in the future without you guys. Why volunteer now? Why not wait? Like, how did I unintentionally, well, maybe intentionally, but I convinced you to sign up to do it, and not everybody did, so why do it? Well, I feel like, me personally, I just want to, like, like, be a step ahead, or, like, I just want to, like, already know how to do what I want to do so then I could be advanced. Like, I don't know. So, no, that actually is interesting because uh, casually observing you in class, that actually totally makes sense. Like, you, you're you the one who's, like, asking the clarifying questions. You're the one who's, like, experimenting. That's good. That's really good. Yeah. That's good. So this is kind of just, for you, this is sort of like, well, yeah, I, of course I would want to because I'm available and... I and that's like it's like what I want to do, so I'm gonna go do it. Okay, no, that's cool. I, you yeah. know, that it's so funny to me because it's, you'd be surprised at the number of people who, you'd think that'd be like sort of self-evident and everybody would do that, but they don't, especially at your age. That's actually really awesome. That's very cool. What, what about you, Karen? Well, I mean, I joined this program so I could try and like find a way to kind of express myself through music. Um, and I Good. think just like trying to figure out different ways to like help get like my feelings and everything out there, like seeing different ways to make music to kind of express myself. Like I don't know what I'm doing at all. Like <laughs> I have no idea. I don't idea. think that's true. I no no. And you know what? I'll give you a perfect example. I can prove it to you. Okay. I didn't tell you guys to keep the video journals. Did I? Oh no, yeah. <laughs> you they the two of them have this like every day they are keeping a video journal and, and I look, for all I know, there is some unbelievably offensive Instagram account somewhere or Snapchat <laughs> where you're just like, You would not believe what the old man idiot did today during fourth hour. Check this idiot out. I'm gonna assume that's not what's happening. No. No. Um, good, thankfully. Uh no, but jokes aside. You, but that's a perfect example of what I'm saying. You guys, on your own, thought about it. You must have had a conversation. <laughs> At some point, you're like, hey, let's just film this as we go. 
Are you going back and looking at those videos at all? Oh, yeah, like yeah. every night. Like, I just like to rewatch them. I'll do my homework or so something. So it is, it is Watch the, the Idiot, and you are you're well, reliving those Well, no, because sometimes it's just us. Like, we like to say we're in the studio. So, no, so that's cool. Like no, that's cool. Us good. in well, the studio. Are. Yeah, and we like to listen and see, like, because we'll be there, and we're like, okay, we don't like how this sounds, and we change it up. And then I'll listen to it again, and I was like, oh, well, we could have changed this maybe about it. And then the next day, we kind of, like, discuss it. The level of creative genius behind that honestly that's so you guys are developing a process that's well but seriously if you think about it you're developing a habit that's now probably you don't even think about it it probably causes you to be less stressed about oh my gosh well what if this happens what if that happens you don't even have to worry about that anymore because you know you've got this backlog that's actually i'm I'm going to use that as an example for other people like, hey, this is a cool way to do it. You know what's interesting to me as a, as a thought is freshman year, you're doing that. What are you doing senior year in here? Like if you're already doing that, we're four weeks in and you guys have been doing that. I, I started noticing it about a week That's and a half ago, terrible. but when did you start it? When do you remember? When did we start it? Yeah, I, think... I think it was the first time we like went in that room. So we... maybe like, when was that like? So like two it's been like two or three weeks, weeks or something. Like that. Yeah. yeah. So out of four weeks, you have you started this like really quickly into it. Yeah. That's amazing. Like that you just were like we're gonna do this. I mean, I, that's. I mean, yeah. At first, it was kind of just like, you know, we're just recording because we just wanted to have fun, and then like eventually we just like set it up. And Which like, okay. you should do too. I mean, this should be fun. You no, yeah, enjoy it, it. it's yeah. fun it's doing fun. all of it. It's just like we would just have it set up and we kind of like just forgot that we had it set up. And then like <laughs> every day it just became like a normal thing. Like, OK, we either open our phone or if we need to use like our phone for something, then right. we set up the laptop and we re record it there. Well, what's cool about it, too, is as we start, and I was kind of going over this earlier in class, but as we start to stretch out on projects. Like I said, the, the advantage you guys are giving yourself of being able to feel like, OK, we're just going to try stuff and we don't have to worry about remembering like we can go back later and figure out mm -hmm. what we actually think is the better play that saves you so much stress creatively that you I, I love that you guys are doing this that's really that's really cool simon why can't you do that what's uh, wrong with you man ADH, no, adhd is what's <laughs> wrong with me i Sorry, that I, was unfair. You're actually doing great stuff. I can't. Too, I can't focus on most things, even if I wanted to. I I love, I love doing. I love doing music in general. Sure. How I picture arts and stuff is like a way to get my creative thoughts out because with ADHD, with ADHD or like creative thought, it's hard to get stuff like that out. Besides, I would argue it. though, as somebody who has a similar issue, one of the things I wish I would have known earlier was being more aware of it and and not being afraid to acknowledge it. That actually helps because because yes, you still have to deal with it, and it's not a nothing thing, but the ability to acknowledge it kind of in a preemptive way means that you can at least on some level control it. As opposed to just blindly like hoping that it works out and who knows what's going to happen next. That's a, if I were to blindly hope that my ADHD would be like, okay, here's an idea, follow that idea. That is that's essentially me going into my own brain and looking for the wise old geezer trying to give me <laughs> advice on stuff. I'm not going to look into my brain and find that. I'm going to look into my own storage files and that's, pull out my own. There you go. And pull that's out my cool. own own thing. Also, it's freeing to realize it because you can realize like, oh, I'm just a naturally chaotic person. It's not just my brain. That doesn't necessarily mean bad. Like that's, We equate that sometimes in the wrong way. That just means you are who you are. That's you, cool. If you're chaotic, you have freedom. That's how I see it. That's a t-shirt slogan, I think. <laughs> I like that a lot, man. That is on, my on that slogan. note, because we're about to hit the lunch bell, I don't want to keep you guys over it. But truly, I am so grateful I get to work with you guys. And I'm excited. I genuinely mean it. Like, if this is where we are and we're at the beginning of week five I think of so, yeah. freshman year, oh, my gosh. Like, a year from now, two years, three years from now in your senior year, assuming I don't drive you crazy and you leave. <laughs> What you will be capable of, what you'll be doing, I, I can't even imagine. Like, that's 
That's the best place to be in. Thank you, guys. Okay.